Main articles. Invasion of Naboo and Supreme Chancellor election. 32 BBY. It is clear to me now that the Republic no longer functions. I pray you will bring sanity and compassion back to the Senate. Padme Amidala. To Shiv Palpatine despite the best efforts of the well-meaning Chancellor Valoram, the Trade Federation blockaded Naboo over disputes about plasma exports. A judicial force carried Jedi Master Ki Gon Jin and Padawan Obi-Wan Kenobi to the Sarkak, a Trade Federation Luka Hulk class LH-3210 cargo freighter to discuss a peaceful resolution to the conflict. Darth Sidious, the Dark Lord of the Sith, ordered Viceroy Newt Gunray to invade Naboo ahead of schedule, and to kill the Chancellor's Jedi ambassadors. Feed. The capital city of Naboo, was swiftly occupied by the Trade Federation droid army. The Jedi, having survived the Federation's efforts to kill them, escaped to Naboo where they rescued Queen Padme Amidala and her entourage. Amidala undertook a journey to Coruscant to plead her homeworld's case to the Senate but the damage to the Naboo Royal Starship's T-14 hyperdrive generator necessitated a detour to the remote world of Tatooine for repairs. Acting on Gunray's report, Sidious instructed his Sith apprentice, Darth Maul, to locate and reacquire the Queen as only she had the authority to sign a treaty making the Federation's occupation of Naboo legal. Although Maul tracked them to Tatooine, he failed to prevent the Jedi from escaping with Amidala on her repaired starship. In addition, Jin took custody of an emancipated slave child, Anakin Skywalker, whom he found to be exceptionally strong with the Force. Believing that he had found the prophesied Chosen One, Jin brought Skywalker to Coruscant to begin his Jedi training. Senator Palpatine and Chancellor Valoram greeted Amidala upon her arrival to the capital. Though Valoram assured her of the Senate's distress over the situation, Palpatine warned her that neither the Senate nor the Chancellor were likely to intervene unless they made a change in leadership. As Naboo's galactic representative, Palpatine served as Amidala's advisor and confidant. He told her that the Senate was corrupt, and the Chancellor a figurehead to the bureaucrats. When the Trade Federation's delegates forced Valorum to adhere to bureaucratic procedure, Amidala countered by calling for a vote of no confidence in him, following Palpatine's advice despite her initial reluctance to denounce a strong supporter of her world. Believing the Republic no longer adhered to its founding principles, Amidala returned to her planet to liberate the people of Naboo without the Senate's intervention. Before leaving Coruscant, Palpatine informed her of his nomination to succeed Valorum. His competitors were Senator Bail Antilles of Alderaan and Senator Ainley Team of Malastare, but Palpatine assured Amidala that he would win the election through widespread sympathy for Naboo's plight. He vowed to dedicate his term to ending corruption, and Amidala implored him to restore compassion to the Senate. Unable to count on Republic aid, Amidala turned to Naboo's Gungan population. Despite ill feelings between their segregated societies, the occupation of their shared homeworld allowed Amidala to mend their relationship through diplomacy. The Gungan Grand Army confronted the Trade Federation's battle droids while the Naboo Royal Space Fighter Corps launched an attack on the Sarkak in orbit. The Gungans were forced to surrender after their defenses collapsed, and several Naboo pilots were killed in the space battle. However, Amidala's team infiltrated the Thede Royal Palace where they captured Gunray, and with the Sarkak destroyed by Skywalker, the droids were deactivated. In the aftermath of the Battle of Naboo, Gunray was taken into Republic custody and the newly elected Supreme Chancellor Sheev Palpatine arrived in Thede where he and the Queen congratulated each other on their recent success. The new Chancellor said that they would work together bringing peace and prosperity to the Republic.